Today I'm working with the new wild clay. In order to test its workability, I'm going to try to make my standard cup in its standard size and standard shape. The ease or difficulty I experience in making this simple shape will tell me a lot about this clay and how it can fit into my pottery practice. I'm throwing off the hump so that I can make several cups back to back. I'll just show you the first one here. At the end, I'll cut it in half so that you can see the thickness of the walls. This is one way I judge a wild clay. Typically, the more plastic the clay is, the thinner I can make the walls. This clay is a beautiful yellow iron color. And it smells like pine needles. It actually has decomposing pine needles in it because I found it in an area full of pine trees. I didn't process this clay, I just added water to it. So it still has this organic matter and small stones in it. I can already feel grog in this. I mean, it feels super plastic. The slip is amazing. And even though I've only just done my first pull and the walls are very thick, I can feel quite a bit of grog. So that's gonna be a good explanation for why it isn't super plastic while wedging. It's just got a lot of grog in it because I didn't filter it. So if I got this same clay again and I did a wet process and I actually filtered it a fair bit, I think it would be really, really impressive. As it is, I like a groggy clay. One particularly large piece of quartz will be the downfall of this cup. The clay itself is amazing to work with, but when there's a large particle in it, it wants to tear. This is especially true when I'm using a hard rib for shaping, which, as the walls get thinner, really tears the stone inside the clay. Rather than imposing my desires onto a commercial material, it's my job to find out what the beauty is intrinsic in the clay. Eventually, it catches and collapses the wall. The fact that this didn't tear through completely is a testament to just how plastic and strong this clay really is. I'm able to smooth things out a bit, enough so that I can cut this first attempt in half and evaluate how thin the walls are. As has been the case before, this wild clay feels much better than any of the commercial clays I can get my hands on. It's got real character. It's not perfect. It has some flaws. It's not always the easiest thing to work with. But it's a hell of a lot more interesting to have in my life than some bland, gray commercial product. And it smells like pine needles. For me, this is a very thin piece. I'm very impressed by this clay, and I'm excited to fire my test bars to figure out how best to use it.